Welcome back, everybody, for the 150th mm-hmm. time to Comic Shop Talk. Back on the Late Night Chat Network for the last little while. I'm your host, Nico, and joining with me today, as always, is my co-host, Chris. In person, what's going on? Live and in person, 150 episodes, That's not right. so bad. That's right. That's right. Who would have thunk it? Not me. <laughs> not I. <laughs> not Chris, especially. <laughs> Here we are, three years later, uh, basically doing this show. And it's been a lot of fun week in, week out, talking about those comics, you know, having some laughs and uh, giving you our weekly reviews. Yeah, Comic Shop Talk, episode 150. Make sure to like and subscribe, you know, because we're not going away anytime soon. I haven't got the notice yet from Chris that he's uh, <laughs> he's hanging up his microphone. So. <laughs> still good, still good. So, uh, yeah, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, everybody. Like and subscribe and check out the playlist and uh yeah 150 episodes been a lot of fun we've had a good time doing this and uh as always looking forward to the conversation here today with chris in uh, in studio here today showed up had to, you know he always comes through for the special episodes you got to make an appearance for That's these it. ones right so it gives us an excuse to get together uh this week we're going to be talking about the new comics that came out for the week of october 16th 2024 and as always, spoiler warning, be forewarned. If you're worried about hearing about what happens in the books here this week, you can always read your books and then come back and check us out later. And uh, we're going to be showing off some of the artwork, talking about what happens in them. So if that's so, uh, you know, something that bothers you, too bad. <laughs> <laughs> 150 episodes in, if you don't like it, why are you still here? Yeah, exactly. No, so yeah, thank you to all the uh, new subscribers lately too. I've, we've been seeing some people that have been checking out the uh, the shows as of lately. And I've been comic, uh, you know, people that are into comics. So uh, it's good to see. It's good to see some people subscribing. That's uh, comics is part of their interest. Nice. It's nice to see that we've uh, had some sway finally over some of the, some of the subscribers to the late night chat network because some people do read comics out there that watch the channel. So it's good to see. Cool. I'm under the impression that nobody watches this stuff. So I'm good. <laughs> I don't follow any of that. Is that, is that I, don't okay? follow, I don't follow any of those numbers games. <laughs> I'm just making it up, Chris. No one's watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I just show up. Chris is like, I just, I just, I just talk to you, Deeks. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. Yeah, no, I just, I'm listen. 150 episodes. I'm trying to hype us up here, Chris. You just had to throw that out there, didn't you? <laughs> no one's subscribing. No one's watching. So, <laughs> oh man. All right. So sorry to burst your bubble there for the 150. <laughs> we still, we still have no viewers. But uh, yeah, cheers, Chris. Cheers. Here we go. Cheers. 150. Right. Yeah. 150 cheers. episodes. Cheers. Let's talk comics. Let's talk some comics. So uh, we got a lot of series that ended this week and a lot of series that started. So here we go. First up on the docket here today, we got Nightwing 118. And I, I got to say, I really love this cover that they did here with like the, the whole cast kind of running off into the distance and then. Nightwing comes back with for the final like yeah see you guys later kind of thing. This is a variant that uh, that um, the main artist did. What's his name? Bruno Redondo, and this was the main yeah. cover here. Still loving that. The best thing DC ever did is putting those uh, those variant covers over top of main covers. Yeah, they, they they are really nice. Honestly, for the extra buck, I used to be kind of against it, but if there's some nice covers that they do like in this format, so I'm. I, I've uh, I've been mixing it up the last few months. I don't know if you noticed, but I do get a bunch of these now because I'm like, you know what? For the extra little bit of money, it's uh, there is some nice ones. And like Chris mentioned, you get both covers. So, I mean, it's 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 nice. Right. So um, what would you think of this, Chris? The finale of Nightwing here. I know you've been, yeah. you know, up and down with this series. You, you've loved it at times. You didn't want to love it at times because, you know, you're not a huge fan of the character. So do you so you say. But uh, what do you think of the last issue here? Yeah, well, I can't say it stuck the landing. I didn't like it so much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know every, I know all the threads are supposed to tie in today, uh, tie in, in into this issue because uh, it's the last issue of uh, the writer and the the artist. Yeah, but you know, it was it was a it was an okay finish to it. You know, I'm just happy it's over. I think, uh, you know, they've been kind of hyping this ending for too long. I think. Yes. You know, like if they were saying, you know, this was over a couple issues ago. Okay, fine. But they've been talking about this, uh, you know, this guy leaving, the the, uh, the writer leaving for like six or seven issues already. It's like, okay, come on, finish up already. If you're going to go, go. And now he's gone. So I'm okay with that. Yeah, I, I can't <clears throat> disagree with you that it feel it has felt very drawn out. Tom Taylor's last um, arc, story arc on this book. And 
I feel like we're getting this story arc on the end of probably one of our least favorite arcs in this book when he kind of went and did that pirate stuff. Yeah. So the fact that they kind of circled back to this to wrap up the book with the heartless character, which also was really drawn out the plot, like that the storyline with him uh, within the, this comic. Um, I can't disagree. I don't, I wouldn't say that he didn't stick the landing. I think it did stick the landing. It was a nice end. It was a nice kind of quick wrap up, but to your point, it was very drawn out and it did take a while to get here for him to just conveniently figure everything out and, and take him down in this last issue. So yeah, I, 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 I do agree with what you're saying, but I, 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 I also think though, overall, this was a great run. I really enjoyed this run. It definitely, I would say the first half of this run was way better than the second half of this run. Um, there was a couple of arcs in the second half where we weren't really big fans of as much uh, as the previous stuff, but it had some high highs this run. I got to say, this was my favorite DC book. I think the first year that we did comic shop talk, this was coming out. And uh, when we did the comic shop talk awards, which those will be coming up again at the end of this year, uh, between Christmas and New Year's, like we always do, everyone. So make sure to tune in for that. This was probably my favorite DC book that year. I'm pretty certain it was. Yeah, yeah it was in. It was in. Uh, and and even at that time, you were kind of like, I don't want to. I don't want to be enjoying this book, and I, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it was good. And 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 I will say, I haven't felt like that for a while for this book. Yeah. Uh, that that being said, I still think this was a decent ending and a wrap up, and it ended on a nice note. I did think it was a nice end that it ended with him and Barbara having some sort of a possible future, even though we know a new writer could come in for the very next issue and they're Just broken up again. Yeah. Right. So for this moment, I was like, okay, I'm glad it didn't get destroyed by the end of this run. And it kind of sustained that feeling of these two together during this run. So I, oh. I, I thought that was nice, and there were some interesting things. Well, you want to talk about what happened here with the dog? Jesus. Yeah, that, was, <laughs> that had me going there for a second. And go, wow, this is, this is what he's going to leave as his legacy. He's going to kill their dog. Yeah. But uh, what was it? Is it, um, I don't know. Is it Maroni here that got, that got, uh, I, the, I, I, I always mix the up the him with the Falcone, uh, yeah. which is Batman. I think this is Maroni or whatever. Yeah. Or Maroni, Falcone, Maloney, Falcone. Falcone. Yeah. That's it. Macaroni, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting it mixed up too, because I'm also watching the penguin show right now. So that's also got uh certain gangsters in it. Yeah. From the Batman world. But anyways, Heartless, yeah, the dog gets shot, bite wing. He survives, though, everybody. So, But you're right, it was a scary moment. He does get shot and injured, and, and Nightwing's able to you know, take him off to get uh, healed up at the end of this issue, thankfully. And Heartless gets taken out, but in the, in the, um, in the, as a result of being taken out, he also takes out the Crime Lord, um, and Nightwing's not too happy about that, but you know, because he doesn't want anybody to die here in this scene here. But you know, listen, people died. You know what? There was some stakes that actually came to came to fruition here at the end of this issue, though. You gotta admit, like oh yeah, he was uh, able to jump. Whoa, yay! Finally, he jumped. That was previous to this issue, okay? Yeah, but here the the, the, the villain didn't know that he can jump. That's right. He goes, "Oh, I got you now, Ross, or did, whatever." Yeah, Nightwing. Yeah, yeah. I'm down here and you're up there. I go look for stairs and go, ah, right. sucker. I can jump. Right. Come on. And then he goes and visits his parents at the end. And, yeah, and then Batman. Barbara comes over. You're not Batman Nightwing. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. He's such a, <laughs> anyways, nice send off for nice, me. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Oh, I thought it was starry good. night. How nice. <laughs> What'd you give this? I'll, I'll give this a 3.5, but I'll give the whole series an easy four. Or at least the, this run of uh, Tom Tom Taylor. I agree. Tom yeah, I agree. I think the Tom Taylor run, maybe even for 2.25 for me. I will agree, I will say that the second half wasn't as good as the first half, but I, even 4.25 for the whole run of Tom Taylor's, it's really good. I'm definitely, if they come out with an omnibus, I'll pick it up. I really enjoyed it for the most part. When it comes to Nightwing runs, I think it's up there. And, uh, and I would give this issue... Yeah, I'll give it 3.75. I'll bump it up. A I'll, bit. Give it a was, yeah. I'll give it a I'll four. I'll give it a four. Uh, you know why? Because I was happy the way it, it ended for yeah. him. Yeah. So uh, it was a nice ending. And there's so many times we don't get nice endings at the end of these long runs. Right. So I, I, I you know, for this moment in time, he was happy. This, let's just all remember that. Right. <laughs> well, I don't think Peter Parker or anything. So yeah. I imagine he could still be happy. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. So that's, uh, that's Nightwing. Moving on here to the next book. We got 
Jupiter's Legacy finale number one. This is the only issue I think I had pre-ordered of this. But uh, Chris, you're new to Jupiter's Legacy. So I'm very interested to see what you felt about this issue. Well, I just jumped in right this. I have no I have right. no idea of what the, the Jupiter's Legacy before. I've seen some issues kind of through some uh, like some $2, or $3 bins or something. I was oh, maybe, you know, Mark Miller. He's been a great writer. I've loved a lot of the stuff that he did. So I just kind of jumped right in here. It looks like I'm in the middle of something big going on. But I do, you know, I didn't know who the heroes were. Like, you know, there's almost like a Superman type character that, I don't know, did he sacrifice himself or something? But, and these worlds going on here. But I I, I did enjoy it. I didn't buy it, though. It's not, was not good. But uh, good enough to read and uh, good enough for me to continue following to see uh, see what the story's all about. I liked it, but it's been a long time since the last miniseries. Probably like two or three years, I think, think since the last one. So I, I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little lost the way they kind of dropped us in in the middle of this. But like like Chris said, this is all kind of just like a big final kind of showdown between what's been um, building up across the last couple of mini series. And like it, it basically, if you read the start, it does tell you uh, the grandchildren of the world's greatest superheroes have been defending Earth from the superheroes of the planet Palorax. They want our food, they want they want our water, and they want our home because they know something huge is coming to destroy their world. The the Utopian, who is basically the Superman character, has been stripped of his powers, his father murdered, and his mother and sister trapped on this alien world light years away. The final execution is soon to be upon us. They want Earth more than anything in the universe, but they're not the only ones. And then they basically let you in on the characters that we're following now, which are the children of of basically the justice league let's say of this world and that's essentially what the jupiter's legacy series was about and then he went and did a series called jupiter's circle which was like um a, um, a prelude to J jupiter's legacy which was basically all their parents when they were younger and it was kind of like a watchman type of story almost where it yeah. was like you saw them back in the 60s or something like that and it was like the formation of the justice league essentially and like you saw the kids parents um before the main series jupiter's legacy so he actually did that after jupiter's legacy and now he's come back with this finale one i think he did another one in between there as well so yeah you're right this is basically just a big final showdown between the characters of the story tommy lee edwards what do you think of the art on this i think it suited the story you know trying to give it that uh you know kind of a realistic feel or you know uh, almost like i don't want to say photo real but it's almost like that Alex Ross Kingdom Come to uh, style of art. It's not, it wasn't my favorite. I've, I've, Tommy Lee Edwards has worked with him a bunch of times, Mark Millar. Um, this looks different than I think I, the previous couple times I've seen him work with him. I don't know if it's the coloring or just his style of art is changing for this story. Uh, I think you're right. You have, you made a good comparison with the Alex Ross, like the very painterly kind of look that he kind of is. A, it might be the colors. I think you're right. Maybe, or maybe he's doing digital stuff here. I don't know because it, it looks a little bit too hyper realistic for my liking. Like I, I, I like his stuff. Normally it's kind of very inky. Usually I'm used to seeing it. Yeah. This, I think, I think the colors is definitely affecting the book, the, his art, I think here. Uh, I don't know if he colored this himself, but I, I'm not loving it. I'll say that, but it's, it, yeah, I think it's all him. So, yeah, he's coloring this, too. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe that's why. Anyways, it's okay. It's not bad. It's not my favorite. But, um, yeah, I'm interested to see where this goes. I think this is a five or six issue miniseries. Usually knowing Mark Millar, it's not going to be that yeah. long. So uh, this will be the end of, I guess, all the Jupiter's Legacy stuff. Not bad. What would you give this? Yeah, 3.75. I, You know what? I'm going to give it a 3.5 just because I'm a little I, – I, I feel like I need a refresher, I think, I, I, a little bit going into this. But otherwise, I thought the issue was fine. Uh, next up, we got Mystique number one. There's my damaged issue now. It was ripped on the side. <laughs> I don't know what the hell happened there. There's a tear here now. Oh, no. <laughs> Anyways, Chris, Mystique number one. What did you think of this? I didn't think it was too bad. You know, good characters. You got Mystique. I think that I like hearing about this Nick Fury Jr. I'm, yeah. I'm not too familiar with him. And I guess I don't know if he's supposed to be the, the Nick Fury from the MCU or not, but definitely looks like him he's his son yeah yeah so i didn't know how that kind of worked out yeah but anyways you know how it worked out samuel L. jackson was cast in the <laughs> avengers movie and they gotta have a reason that uh, they gotta have a samuel L. jackson right. character you know who you have uh to thank for that mark miller 
Mark nice. Miller, when he did the Ultimates, uh, the Ultimates, the Ultimate Universe Avengers, his Nick Fury was basically this type of Nick Fury with, made to look like Samuel L. Jackson because he thought that he would be a good casting Ooh. choice. And then so art imitates art. Yes. Imitates art, yes. Sort of. Yes. Nice. Yeah. That's sees he's a big reason as to why they casted him. Uh, so, and then, you know, he went on to do um, the Secret Service movies with them. I think he was in one of those, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't he? Oh, no. Um, uh, the Kingsman. The Kingsman. He's in oh, that. Oh, yeah. He was the villain in the Kingsman. There you yeah. go. Which is Mark Miller's yeah. book. Nice. <laughs> so. <laughs> Maybe uh, Miller's a fan of uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, he is absolutely. So, but uh, yeah, go on. Sorry, what else? Yeah, but know? otherwise, uh, yeah, good characters. You know, like I love seeing Creed. Mm. He's in here, but uh, they're really playing with Mystique's power to to shape shift a lot in this one. Yeah, I guess that's what they should do because that's what she does. Right. But it, it kind of threw me for a loop a few times. But overall, I thought it was a decent story. I think the art could have been a little more decent i guess i don't know it's it wasn't bad but it mm. wasn't great okay and you know just looking back at things i was under the impression that saber tooth is dead is he not dead or is he dead i mm. thought he died at the end of the wolverine stuff no i think he was still no. alive i okay. think that this is basically almost like now she's kind of just being following following up on this whole yeah. Krakoa stuff here and and tasked to track him down here right so uh wait was that was her mission or was uh well no not it wasn't her it was um Ma maverick that was tasked to bring him down yeah which uh he's working for shield and then mystique shows up yeah there's a lot of stuff i don't know what's going on. like maverick doesn't have his his healing powers i never, i never knew he had healing powers to begin with like maverick isn't a mutant is he well he's a weapon x person i know he's a weapon yeah, x person yeah. but i was under the impression like no, i thought he was just like a like a mercenary that kind of hung with the crew. No, him. no, he's a yeah, 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 he's okay. a yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we didn't seem through that Krakoa stuff. Um, I I did enjoy the Nick Fury part as well. <laughs> that was kind of cool. I like that Shield is a part of this story because I feel like it's been a while since we've seen Shield, yeah. and it makes sense that some form of Shield or whatever you want to call this new organization now, the pseudo Shield, and it's got Nick Fury Jr. working a desk, <laughs> so, which is which is a kind of fun idea as well. And Nick Fury's kind of giving him shit. He's just like, really, kid, <laughs> they got you working a desk. <laughs> He's like, you're not, you're no Nick Fury of mine. <laughs> you know, you're no son of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so i kind of like that and uh you know what for I, I for a book like um i know we weren't really sure about all these like mini series about all these other characters but this one makes sense mystique as like yeah. a secret agent kind of thing and she's able to like um do all these disguises because of the fact that she is mystique and like there's even the this page i really like this page how they show her kind of transform into all these different people as she's talking to maverick I dug this. I, I mean, Declan Shalvey, he's never, he, he wrote Andrew this. I, I do like his art, um, but I, I've been kind of down on some of his writing, honestly. And between this and the Terminator comic, which I talked about last week yeah. that he wrote, and this one is him writing and drawing it. I was, I've, I've actually, I think he's, he's gotten enough, uh, enough books under his belt now where he's written, where I think he's getting better. I honestly really enjoyed this. I thought, um, yeah, I a, think the premise for the story is good. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fun premise. And I think for a five issue mini or whatever this is going to be, I think it, it'll work out pretty well, I think. So, yeah. um, and this, is this a Madam Mask thing here at the end? I, I didn't know what was going I on. I thought there. that was Destiny, but. Oh no, I think you're right. Yeah, I think that because that would make sense with Mystique. Yeah. And it says it is his destiny. For whatever reason, yeah, I'm such an idiot. I saw the mask and I'm like, is that Madam Mask? <laughs> so, yeah. so, just ignore me, guys. <laughs> Anyways, what what'd you think of this then? I'll give it a 3.5. I'll go 3.75. We're not on the same page today, Chris. We're like oh, wow. a point two five off all of our ratings. <laughs> Really, after 150 episodes, Chris, you're gonna do me like this? <laughs> 3.75 for that one. All right. <clears throat> well, you know what? That that actually just shows how honest we are with our uh, opinions around here. Despite being friends on this show, <laughs> we're not always gonna give you the same thing. Like, there's some episodes where we're all on the same page. It happens. All right, Chris. Avengers Assemble number two. Yeah. It's uh, once again we got the. Uh... I guess the the B team of Avengers, the Earthbound Avengers, you know, they're all hanging out at the Avengers Mansion. And the idea is that Cap or whoever, you know, has put together a team and whenever they got, I guess, called out to whatever, maybe these won't be Earth ending uh, events. Right. They still get called out. And then once they leave, another team will come into the house to kind of stand by. 
the stuff with Hercules. I love Hercules in this comic. He's talking great here the whole time. You know, and they're just on little crazy adventures. You know, I'm not sad that I didn't buy any of this stuff, but there are fun adventures or, I don't know, missions that they go on. Here's a whole bunch of ghosts that uh, kind of come loose. And I think they end up learning how to talk to him or something. And then, you know, they figure out they're under the control of some red ghost. I don't know who that villain is, but it's a fun issue. Fun characters. And, you know, I think the best parts of this is even just the... When they're at the when the, like the B team or the C team might be just sitting at the mansion, kind of chit chatting with each other while the other team is out doing what they're doing, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fun comic. <clears throat> it might be something to get good in the trade there if uh, if you like picking all this stuff up all at once. All right, what'd you give this one? I'll give it three point seven five. Okay, is this going to be a mini series or is this an ongoing? Do you know? I was under the impression it was a mini series, but. Who knows? They're 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 playing funny uh, you're funny pick, games. You're picking it. these up though, right? No, like, no, I'm not oh, you're not. Them. Okay, I'm just you're these digitally. Online. Okay. All right. Next up, we got Local Man Twenty Five. Oof. Oh, I missed out this week, guys. I didn't read this one. Wow. Big uh, news for Local Man. Oh, I actually don't have the art for this one either. So you're on your own on this wow. one. <laughs> no assistance. <laughs> Unfortunately, big news for Local Man. This is the last issue. Are you serious? I'm serious. They didn't even announce it. Like I feel they like they announced it in the in the pages at the end. You know the the notes. No, that's it. This one takes place. You know whatever. Uh, I don't know. It's supposed to be like I think it's issue twenty five, and the last issue was like thirteen or something like that. Right. And then so this one takes place in the future. Like I guess the number. that's what I thought. Was, so when I brought this up, I'm like twenty five. I that threw me off. It threw me for a loop. Oh, I didn't hear it ended. Oh, that's too bad. This was a nice indie darling. This book, I actually really enjoyed this one. It was it was good stuff. But what, like, you think sales weren't good? Like, it's well, seems... he explains it in the end. Okay, you know, go goes, ahead. Yeah. Anyways, as for the story and the issue, uh, I guess whoever his sidekick was in the po- before or after, I think she shot the vice president or something. She went to jail. So local man picks her up, and it's been I don't know whatever a few years while she's been you know whatever serving her time. And local man takes her back to Farmington. You know, nothing's happened over the years. You know, they're chit-chatting on the way back. And uh, I guess local man's mother has has joined, uh, I guess, that cross-gen. Or not cross-gen. Cross-jack? No, no. The, well, that was his name. The Gen it? 4 or something, whatever. Whatever, the, the, old super, team? whatever old... the superhero kind of company was. Okay. Like, that Farmington has become, like, the home of superheroes now. Right. And now they're training, like, whoops, now they're training sort of, like, the fourth generation. And, um, and you know, so he sends his, whatever, his protege there to, to to be a teacher. You know, they go back to the town. Everything's good in the town again. And then the third gen is back, and they're ready to do business. And then somehow they have end up fighting that fourth gen, and they freaking whoop their ass. And, uh... You know, they put that fourth gen in jail because they were trying to aid uh, a Russian superhuman that was trying to seek asylum in, in the States. Well, I know there's a whole bunch of sort of stuff going on. And then, you know, uh, Cross Jack's sidekick, you know, it says, hey, well, you know, you're the old man. You know, you shouldn't be doing this anymore. So there's kind of a whole comment on, you know, the the new generation trying to take up, you know, the the reins there. But the old generation won't let go. Right. So it was kind of a you know a good story there, and at the end, whatever Cross Jack, you know, he becomes an artist, or he's where he was working on being an artist uh, during these times, during this downtime. And then you know he just kind of explains you know how how his art, kind of you know, uh, I guess, translate into life, you know, where you don't. It's all explained in there pretty good in the book. And then on the flip side, there is a. Uh, Whatever you know, you know how they have the two, yeah, the two stories. Like this is more like the '90s cross gen, or the Team Three. I forget what the what team that it? he used to be part of, Cross Jack. Uh, the, the like yeah, the, like Gen Three, yeah. or whatever's out there. And yeah. then I don't know. They're like uh, they're doing a commercial, so they're on the beach playing beach volleyball. That's nice. But then yeah, the big news is got to read the the letters page at the end where he explains why he can't continue doing this. But he said it just took up too much time. And, you know, like, the story isn't over, but uh, it's over for now. So is this both of them? Like, Tony Fleet and uh, said, and uh, they yeah. both said this? Yeah. Yeah, they just said it just took too much time. The writing took too much time. You know, he explained how uh, 
you know how the like the genesis of this local man story came to be right you know how they got Tipsy excited Lee. about it yeah and uh you know he, he's just saying it just took it took too much time for them to write and do yeah and they got other things going on that's fair so. that's fair yeah that's too bad man i mean it, it it honestly i read up to last issue this is one of the only issues i didn't get around to reading in time for the show to hear that it's ended and i didn't know that after i felt like you know this had moderate success this book honestly like yeah 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 I, or at least critically yeah. i don't know about sales wise maybe it wasn't worth it enough for them and i feel like both those guys already work in so many other caught co- like i mean they're just doing that wolverine miniseries for marvel yeah. right now which both of them which is so obviously it's not like it's a it's a working relationship type of deal right because even though we haven't really been digging that wolverine miniseries they're still doing other work i know tony fleece has had really a lot of popularity with his stray dog series from image comics as well which i think was fine for me but that was a big hit apparently for him so yeah i mean i guess both these guys are working on other books right so they're just like yeah, yeah whatever but uh it's too bad because i feel like i read up to last issue and this even though it was a a, a jump issue to the future it sounds like yeah. this seems like very sudden honestly like we just wrapped up the last arc and now we're just gonna be like oh it's good done guys they didn't announce this i think previously did they yeah this until, i think this was a surprise yeah Ah, uh, that's too bad that's too bad okay well what'd you give it yeah i gotta give this easy four is a good story like i've loved this local man all the way same through. i know and yeah it was yeah I, I i agree i think i even as a series as a whole i think i would give that like a four oh, yeah. yeah 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 as a series as a whole i give this a 4.25 yeah 4.5. absolutely yeah absolutely no it was a great series i we we kind of found ourselves really enjoying it out of nowhere on this show and it was actually i know chris's favor of the week many times yeah. honestly and like unexpectedly and uh and even for me too, it was a really great book. Like, and it used to come out on good weeks. Don't get me wrong. I remember you kept saying that you're like, you're like, listen, there's nothing else good this week. This is really good. So I'm going to give it to this, but yeah. it was just one of those things. I think critically, I, a lot of people I've talked to, even fans of the nineties comics era, definitely check this out. If you guys missed this book, because I think it's worth it still to check oh, yeah. out. Yeah, absolutely. That's too bad though. I'm a little disappointed. I thought this was going to keep going. Well, hopefully right? it's not over. Maybe, you know, they'll take a break for a year or two. And, uh, you know, if they come up with a good story that they think they can, I mean, tell. it's image it's creator. owned, yeah. so they definitely could do it again for sure. So we'll see. All right. Next up, Chris, you got Catwoman 69. Oof. <laughs> well, I think they do something special for this issue, you know, being Catwoman and all, but, I think she gets a new costume in this issue. Uh, let me see what's going on in here. Yeah. I th- I don't think I thought this issue was okay. You know, I was expecting it to just be really garbage just because uh, you know, they're starting a new arc here. But to be honest, I can't really remember what goes on in here. But it was okay from what I remember. You know, I'd give it a 3.5. You know, she's got a new issue or a new a new costume. The art looks really good. Yeah. Some good scenes. Some good scenes, but I don't know, a little washed out for me. Yeah, that's fair. I think that's a yeah, that's a good point. But obviously didn't leave too much of an impression on you if you're not remembering. Yeah, not not too much. But then, you know, at the same time, I read a lot this week, you that's know, fair. and some good stuff with Catwoman too. So yeah, that's fair. You know, after seeing this and seeing what I'll tell you what I read later on. But uh okay. when you see this here, it's like, well, it's not uh, so good. <laughs> but yeah, three point five. Next up we got Witchblade number four. Uh, <laughs> this might be a, this might as well be an image catwoman but uh you know is, it, is this what you wanted to talk about later <laughs> not really you're so, the one reading it what can i say <laughs> yeah this one just was thrown into my uh my stock there but you know i can't say no to this thing it's not a you know the art's okay you know i've got the cheesecake factor in there that they don't lean into enough for my taste but uh but you know, I guess it's the story of Witchblade finding her power. She's got her, her her little mentor there, and the big deal is that this mentor might not be all that he's cracked up to be, and uh, he could be a bad guy. Oh wow, <laughs> I haven't heard that story before. But uh, three point five. There are some good lines in there because he gets her going, though. He gets her motor running. Seems like seems like he's really getting her motor running in this. There's yeah. a lot of caressing happening in the pages. <laughs> well, that's what he does. <laughs> The snake. What are you doing to that poor witch blade? <laughs> what do you think of the art on this book? Oh yeah, it's, it's all decent art. Like I said, not, not cheesecakey enough for not you. Not leaning into the yeah, 
Yeah. So the uh, factors I may enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up, I got uh, Batman and Robin year one, number one. And I got this great Mateo Scalera variant here. And this is the Chris Somni regular cover. Like Chris said, it's great to have both covers because honestly, I wouldn't be able to pick between these two covers. I love both these artists. So, Hey, you get this, you get both of them for the price of one. So I'm really happy about that. Yeah. Take a look. Um, yeah, Chris, I think you missed the boat on this one. I know it's yet another Batman book, but this is Mark Wade and Chris Somni who have done many wonderful like uh, jobs together in the comics industry. They did daredevil together. They did black widow over at Marvel together. These two have worked a lot together in the comics industry. And I think they've, they've done a lot of great comics together. And this is no exception. Great start. Uh, basically, you know, it, it being year one, this is the first time that Robin, you know, uh, Dick Grayson, Robin, before he became Nightwing, when he became his ward or whatever, his sidekick, uh, he, this is basically the start of that whole relationship. So in this issue, Batman's kind of showing him the ropes, but you know, in this one, and, um, uh, he's explaining how, you know, how ex like the, the characterization of him in this comic, I think is just perfect. The way that he writes Robin, because he's so enthusiastic he so he wants to get into you know you know wants to do everything wants to kind of get into the mix with everything he's always like he's he's being batman to the punch to fight these bad guys he's excited for the cases he wants to see the bad guys and fight them like he, he's just going head first into this life and batman's just like hey you know he's up take it easy like let me go first let me take the lead you know, it, it's it's just it, it's just a really good characterization and kind of breakdown of the relationship that these two would have at the start, and the way that it's written, Mark Wade just does a really good job of differentiating the um, the the way that Robin goes about things and the way that Batman goes about things, even early in their relationship here of working together, because like even when he goes to meet Gordon here and he does he throws up the light and he goes to meet him. He shows up with the kid. He's like, really? You're like, you're bringing a young kid around with you now? Like, what are you doing? Are you stupid? Like, that's a bad decision. Like, he's commenting on it. And he's like, he's like, uh, he's like, yeah, but, uh, you know, all all children, uh, you know, uh, deal with trauma or something. You know, like, very Batman-like thing to say. Like, he's like, uh, what better time to really train them or something like that. He says something like that, which you would expect from him. And, and he's and he and you know he's trying to justify the fact that he is using a kid to fight crime, which, if you think about it, is pretty ridiculous. So you know that's also been a comment uh, by people over the years about how it seemed unrealistic that they did this in the first place. But you know they try to justify it in this, and and he's just so gung ho. Like he's talking to like he's talking to like Gordon in this, and like Gordon kind of like finds him annoying because he's like, all right, let's get going. You know, let's, let's do this. Right. And, you know, Batman and him are just, you know, he's shot out of a cannon and Batman's Batman. He's just very, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> quiet and just like serious. And I, so I just liked how he wrote both the characters and yeah. Is this another Batman comic? Absolutely. Is this something new? Absolutely not. But at the same time, it's just really well done. Mark Wade has a good voice for these characters. Chris Somme is a great artist. He just came off of Firepower with Robert Kirkman, which I was a big fan of. Uh, Kirkman was the first guy to take him away from Mark Wade. He did like three other comics with Mark Wade prior to being taken away by Robert Kirkman. And of course, Robert Kirkman's a big enough guy in the industry, I guess, to get him to go work for him for a little bit. But here he is doing this uh, Batman and Robin year one with Mark Wade. And it, it's fantastic. I got, I just got to say, and there's a great uh, teachable moment in this with two face where uh, he talks about, there's like a bomb that he's going to blow up before they take him down and he turns to Batman. And he's like, he was just uh, bluffing about this whole bomb thing. Right. And then all of a sudden this bomb goes off and he's just like, never, never assume that these uh, maniacs like, you know, uh, are just bluffing about this Robin. And it's kind of like, almost like at the end, it's like the stinger of this issue that he learned a lesson from going out on patrol with Batman. But Batman says like how great he is. He's actually surprised at how good he does right from the get go in this issue. So yeah, just really well done Batman comics, honestly, from a great team. So I, I give this like a 4.25 this week. I thought it was really good. But is, is it, it treading new ground? Is it yet another Batman comic? Yeah, it is. It's not really treading new ground, but it's just it is very high level quality though. Like uh, what do we what do we say on the show, Chris? What is it like uh but when it, you bring out all the greatest creators to, for a book? You coined the <laughs> phrase before. 
top tier talent. There top you go. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think I coined that phrase. <laughs> All right. The last road in to re-evolution number three this week. I don't have the uh I don't have the uh art for this one. It's is okay. This has been coming out like every two, three months. It's a very delayed book. I mean, I think it's supposed to be bi-monthly, but at this point it may have been three months this last one. I don't know. I literally like this world of the last Ronin and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the way that they've built this up, but I don't like the new status quo of this series as good as the previous one, because now all the turtles are dead. If you read the original last Ronin, a lot of them were dead except for one who was the last Ronin, which this is a big, a big spoiler. I feel like everybody should know at this point, it was Michelangelo, which is my favorite turtle. And the first two series, one was like one previous, like a prelude to that. And the other one was like the main story about him, you know, uh, basically uh, taking on like uh, all the bad guys that had killed his brothers, the other turtles or whatever. So like the, we've had two other series that kind of took place during that time period. And now we're getting the new turtles, which are the new baby turtles that are teenage or turning into teenagers now um that have taken the mantle in place of the old turtles so it's kind of and like uh, april o'neill is old in this and she's the one that's kind of showing them the ropes and this kind of stuff it's fun i'm still enjoying it but i don't like it as much as the old turtles being around or even like michelangelo kind of tried to like you know um fight people and name in his brother's name after they all killed got killed right so like that whole last ronin storyline i think the best of that storyline is behind us now unfortunately because this new kind of turtles i just don't have a connection with these people still the decent story being told still enjoyable not as not as good as the previous last road and stuff so at this point i'm just continuing to read it because i do like the world the stuff that they established uh, previously but i hope they go back to the well and show us more stories with the turtles older pre previous to them having getting gotten killed in this last Ronin universe. But I'll give this a 3.5 out of five this week. It was still good, but I'm not, I'm not enjoying it as much as the previous installments. And then uh, I got ultra mega number six. Also don't have the art for this one this week. Uh, last issue. If you can recall, I I couldn't tell you what the hell was going on in this series. I, I, I'm starting to get the, my head around it again. I think this issue did a good job of finally catching us up on, what's been happening since the series went on hiatus like two years ago. <laughs> um, that being said, uh, still not my favorite. I still really enjoy the art. I do. I am starting to enjoy the story a little bit more from last issue, just cause I, I didn't know what had happened after it's so far away from that. So, so long from uh, away from being from uh, reading this book. Um, but I, you know, I'll give this a 3.25 out of five this week. Uh, all right, Chris, where monsters lie, cul de sac number one. Oof. This was uh, another sleeper hit from the, the last run that they had. Yeah. And uh, I guess this one here, they've gone to what, whatever, area C or plan B or plan C when their first neighborhood went to hell. Yeah. And it's like seeing the, the characters that are there. They're, they're hilarious. It's funny how this, like how their villainy or whatever their serial killerness is. It's almost like some sort of company that they have to answer to, or it's like some homeowners association. That's some good stuff there. And then they bring in, the, I guess, the cop from the last one. That's right. And, you know, then I think they send some guy that can go into his dreams just to make sure he's on the up and up. Basically a Freddy character. Yeah. It's, yeah. And that's what I got from it. Cause there's all these, like even the guy at the end, he's kind of like the Michael Myers or Jason S type character yeah. that they're bringing back to life. Uh, they all have these like versions of, of horror characters from movies in the, in these books, right? Which they, they basically they are, but they're not yeah. these characters. Yeah. That Santa Claus guy complaining that he's got to go back to work so soon. The holiday killer. He's yeah, like, what is Arbor Day? Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, what's holidays? What, what holidays now? So just the writing's good. The, it's all funny stuff. And there is a good story going on. I guess uh, they have, what's that guy's name? Whatever the cop, they have his wife or something. Yeah. And so they kind of got him under wraps or something or kind of under control. And, yes. And then he's, you know, plotting the revenge. But uh, what can he do? You know, if uh, if that Freddy Krueger or whatever, the dream character realizes what he's up to, then it could be lights out for him. So there's a, there's a good dynamic brewing in there. And I like the dynamic between the two uh, homeowners association. The leader, I guess that there's the grandma that comes in. Yes. And she kind of takes control and the guy that's, 
that was in control. He's not too happy about it. So it's, yeah, a lot of good stuff in here. Yeah, I, I still love this book. Yeah, I, I'm so glad it's back. Uh, Kyle Starks, of course, same writer, same artist working on this. Uh, Peter Kowalski. Um, and yeah, we also get to follow up with this kid from the first one that survived uh, being a prisoner of these people. He lost his arm, which you still see in this one that he's lost his arm. But now this big demon dog that they have is actually like his pet. It seems yeah. like and uh, he's actually just hanging out with one of the killers now. It's kind of gone in a direction I didn't expect it to from the last one. Um, where I wasn't sure if I was going to dig it, but then by the end of it, I was like, oh, I still love this book. It's just yeah. like, now it's like all the people that were like, had, uh, instead of like stepping away from all these traumatic events, they've all been acclimated into the group now. It seems like now they're all just like hanging out with these killers, which I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but I, I love it. Like you said, the humor is great. Kyle Starks is great. Uh, it's just a really fun book. And like by the end of it, they're like showing that they're resurrecting this like Michael Myers type of character who was in the first series who ended up getting killed. Yeah. And now they're bringing them back to life. And uh, yeah, I, 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 my favorite bit was though the holiday killer bit, like you said. And then like that guy's like, Oh, you can, you can, uh, you can put a tree in their ass to kill them or something. <laughs> He's like, Whoa, 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 calm down. What are you doing over there? Like, what do you mean? Like, I'm not going to do that. Like chill out. <laughs> I, I saw like, yeah, it's just really well written. And yeah, he, he promised his wife here at the end. He's going to, he's going to kill all these guys. Like he's on the inside, but he's also working against them. So it's an interesting dynamic. So what'd you give this? Yeah. I give it a four easy. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Even maybe 4.25 for me this yeah. week. It was really good. Uh, okay. And then we got the conclusion of Destro this week that came out. What did you think of this, Chris? Yeah, I picked up this copy. Uh, I've been enjoying the Well, I, I don't know. I can't say I've been enjoying this Destro, but it's okay. It's been moving the story along, and I, there's a lot of stuff going on here. I kind of like it's funny that with these with these two twins there, Tomax and Zaymont. I think it's funny that he just has to beat up one of them, and the other guy gets beat up anyways. And I guess Destro puts the screws to him here after they try to take over his Mars company. And uh, Destro throws out the olive branch, says, hey, you know, there's something big out there. We got all work together. And Cobra's in there, too. So that's where it sort of ends up. Yeah, I mean, it kind of really just sets up the whatever is going to be happening in G.I. Joe because they're all now working together. Yeah. Cobra Commander comes in here and Destro, it seems like he still kind of wants to work outside of working alongside Cobra in terms of like the stuff that's happening with his company, yeah. Mars. But he is also going to work with them because he thinks it's going to better their all their situations as a result. But yeah, he seems to be unsure. He needs uh, the I guess the resources of all these people. But there were some good things like when those uh, whatever the Crimson Guard are trying to defend those uh, Crimson Twins, mm -hmm. and then you know they all get kind of run back and they send them down into the basement where all the bats are. And then they just, you know, they activate those bats and I don't know, somebody's oh, that's like a freaking right. blender down there. All shit just goes uh tits up here. Yeah, yeah. every every there's a lot of fight, a lot of fighting going on. A lot of people issue. die. This isn't yeah. like the cartoon where they blow up the plane and <laughs> no. see the parachutes pop. Yeah, it all got it went to hell here in this last issue of this mini series. So I will say that. Yeah. But... I was hoping they drop some big bomb at the end here, but I don't I don't if I'm not saying uh you know, misremember, but I don't, I don't remember seeing any sort of big bomb. You know what? Yet. One thing I got out of this though, is that, well, you actually, you see it in his reflection. You do see something falling. It seems like at the oh, end. Oh, and here. that was supposed to be yes. uh, the Cybertron That's falling. Right. Yeah. Cause so he thinks there's more actual uh, coming from the sky. Yeah. Thinks, more energon or more right. something more. So the transformers part of this is really interconnecting in all yeah. these series now. And not only that, I will say about this mini series, it, it did it did if there's one takeaway that you can take from all these mini series like even one character i like one uh specific detail about these characters uh it, it they're kind of successful in that sense in this one i learned that destro will go rogue at any point honestly like yeah. he's he's only like it seems yeah he's like, in it for himself exactly he's already, he's already plotting to you know i'm just letting right. this kind of brew until i'm ready to if, take it if over there's one thing about these miniseries i think that they were successful with is whether or not you like the miniseries if the, it, it made me learn something about each character by yeah. the end and 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 it made me kind of like figure like this is how he's going to be when they go together in these books. Like this guy looks out for number one, like looks out for himself. Right. So, yeah, I, I did like that part about it. Uh, what'd you give this, though? I'll give this. Uh, 
I'll give it a 3.75. But if you want to hype this whole storyline, there's the next Transformers. I don't know if it's a spoiler variant cover, but you know how Starscream was pulled up out of, out of the yeah. ground at the end. He's got no legs. And the next cover, he's there, uh, you know, whatever, fighting. And he's got a his tank, his legs fucking driving around. The ground. <laughs> that was the that. cover, but uh, no, I, I don't know, I know where that goes to. I'd give this a 3.5 out of five. And, and I, honestly, like what, like we've said, this is probably my least favorite of the miniseries, but still not bad. I mean, maybe if you're a big G.I. Joe fan, you get more out of this than I did. But for me, it was just like, you know, which isn't bad. 3.5, you know, it's it's yeah, G.I. Joe's coming next month and uh, it's all coming together. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so next up here, we got Batman Superman World's Finest number 32 this week. And Eclipso in the mix here. Chris. Yeah, I haven't been following this Batman uh, Superman business or World's Finest for... I've been kind of in and out. They have the new artist in here. I think uh, he did a good job. Great. Yeah, as a follow-up to Dan Moore, that's the thing, main thing I was going to say about this book. I love this art in this issue. Yeah. He killed it, this artist. Hold on, what's his name? Gutierrez, it says. Hold on. Adrian Gutierrez. I wasn't familiar with this artist before, but I'm telling you for the follow up on Dan Moore on this book, he is killing this title. He's bringing his all. It, it looked awesome. I love it. Yeah, it's great stuff. You know, I loved World Finest. I love Mark Wade. But what the heck are they doing with this guy? They're giving this guy the keys to the freaking Marvel or the DC universe here, it seems. Yeah. I'm not too sure about that. But anyways, this stuff here, you know, I'm not sure how it, how it got to be. But they have, you know, Batman, Superman, you know, floating around there, you know, being possessed. And they're just kicking ass doing what they do. And they sort of break the spells there. I do like how they get Superman to break the spell. I think. Is this with Selena there? Or no, no, I'm I'm mixing this up. You're mixing up. books up, yeah. Yeah, sorry. But anyways, they do get him to break the spell here, right? Or no, Superman, they break the spell to Superman? Yeah, the GSA is able to basically break through the crystal like that's housing like all those other superheroes and they break the spell at the end and they all come for them. But then Eclipse, so they turns the tables on them and they basically freeze all of them in some other type, type oh, of crystal yeah, yeah, form yeah, yeah. by the end of this issue. And uh, this is where Batman and Superman are running around being like possessed by the Eclipse um, diamond. And uh, they have the rest of the team in prison, and the GSA has to come and break them out in this yeah. issue. Yeah, I think the story's decent, but you know, when you see sort of stuff like this, you know, uh, through deceased, yeah, like they're bringing some big characters in here, like having the Spectre show up. Yeah, it's not. I would, yeah, and looking over this is it's a good story. But it just doesn't feel relevant. I love this issue. I thought this issue was fantastic. Between the art, the artist, the new artist bringing it, uh, this moment where they snapped Robin's neck just to psych out Batman to snap him out of his, uh, or they made it look like they snapped Robin's neck and then yeah. kind of to snap him out of like his headspace of being possessed by the Eclipso stuff and the Superman, the, the way they, re they resolve that by making him fly into the sun and it kind of dissipating all of the, Oh uh, yeah. That's how they did. Yeah. 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 Cause the heat obviously took all yeah, that away. The and darkness. he's the only person that could actually run into the sun. Honestly, yeah. I think Wade came up with some, with some really smart ways to kind of like uh, take down the Eclipso yeah. in this scenario. And between that and the great art on the art on this, I thought this was a fantastic issue. I this was actually in the GSA, Doctor Fate. Uh, yeah, sign me up, man. I, I, I Specter, like I love this. I love this shit, man. This is uh, I, and look at these pages. Just some fantastic pages by this artist in this issue. This was a a very unexpected treat. Yeah. I thought the issue before this, because we're again we're just coming out of the whole Dan Mora, Mark Wade period of of World's Finest. I was like, yeah, it's okay. This one I thought was hitting on all cylinders uh, for me at least. I I, I really dug this issue. I, it's uh, just another well done. I think super straight up superhero comic this week. This feels like it's an event that uh, Mark Wade might have pitched to DC and they just said no. And right. he goes, okay, I'll just put it in World's Finest because like so much happens in here. That, yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, but it just happens, you know. Yeah. Would you give this? If I did like I'll give it a. I'll give it a four. Just looking at it now. Four point two five for me this week. Great, great issue. Uh, next up, we got Wonder Woman 14. I got the DNA cover this week, the David Nakayama variant. Yeah, I got the baby variant. And this is baby variant by who? Daniel Sempre. Oh, the actual series artist. Yeah. How'd you pull that off? That was one of them. It was just one of the variants. Oh, okay. I didn't see that one. Is that nice? No. 
this because this is Daniel. Uh, oh, is this this is him too? Is it not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, the, oh, he did another variant. Yeah, oh, okay, I've seen that one. Uh, what do you think of this, Chris? Well, it's the issue uh, for the history that everybody's been clamoring for, from what I understand. It starts out nice, and it fucking just goes. I don't know. I don't know, man. This guy's been spinning the wheels on this story for so long, and now they're spinning him even more. Yeah. You know, some big things happening here. You know, with the death of Steve Trevor. You know, I don't. I don't want to say that's a spoiler. Like, you know, this drops like. You know, I heard about this before. I go, oh man, you know, I read it in some whatever comic book story, and you know, oh man, it just spoiled the whole issue for me. It has nothing to do with this. Well, not not has nothing to do with it, but oh. no, I, I agree with you. I, I I was underwhelmed by this. I, what, I, what a baloney stuff! And I've seen some previews for the next issue, and it's not looking any better. So I understand that this story is taking up to like twenty. Like, come on. I uh yeah enough already I agree with you 110 percent I I honestly really disappointed by this this series started off really promising and now I'm feeling what other people I feel like have criticized Tom King for which I honestly it's very self indulgent what's going on in this story right now it seems like it's like okay dude like really like get over yourself here and just give us a story yeah. that we were promised. And we don't need a, every single issue to just focus on one aspect of a character or a story. I, I would argue that the tie-in issues that we just got that were part of absolute power yeah, were, better, were, than were better than this. Yeah. yeah, which is like every time we come back to this story now, it feels like there's no progression and we're wasting really good artists on this this shit. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you know, I, you're ever fucking crying the whole issue into a freaking towel or the, the American flag there. I, Come on. Like I like how sometimes he'll he will use a whole issue to kind of focus on one. Yeah, but he's done that for like the last exactly. three or four issues. It's too much at this point. I yeah. agree. I agree. Because even at the after the first arc of Wonder Woman, I felt like that was what happened there. But then he had an issue that was all action. Like there was a big fight yeah. when all the other Wonder Women showed up. And since then, I feel like we've had no progression in the story whatsoever at the end of that first battle. Then we have the tie-ins. Now we have this where she's crying the whole issue about see Trevor being dead. And then yeah, like this like, was a nice scene when uh, whatever Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent show up to the talk to her. You know, it's nice seeing them kind of sure. all, all come together. But that's one page. Right. You know, whatever, swimming down to the river sticks. And, and then you, know, you have another page of her swimming back up. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Like, you know, I feel for Steve Trevor, you know, you know, you think they're going to have this baby go, okay, buddy, all right, at least you're going to get some Amazonian action, but no, nothing. And then and she but, freaking winds some thread together and freaking goes into the clay. Look, like, on. Tom King is a really good writer. I'm not denying that, but, like, I just feel like he, like, he, yeah, it, it's too much sometimes. And, like, yeah. like this scene was cool. Like, when she went to visit him, like, in the afterlife, and he, and he says he got into a fight with with the with the with the guy who yeah the, the river sticks yeah, guy yeah. whoever he is okay we get it you're a tough guy <laughs> this is why wonder woman yeah. likes you this is kind of again the same points it seems like he's been driving home this whole run like why does this guy why does she like steve trevor why does she yeah. like a human like this like what we get it he's super fucking cool he's worthy of wonder woman that's yeah, enough dead, now man. yeah he's dead <laughs> we could better have... stay dead too <laughs> Better not come back as in like, oh, it's that Wonder Woman for the movie. The big thing, I guess you could say that happened at the end of this issue, though. Yeah, that was terrible. That that sequel was uh, <laughs> not it. Anyways, the big thing, I guess you could say that happened at the end of this issue, though, is it looks like they've set up the birth of Trinity, which he's been this whole time. He's been telling future yeah. stories. So it looks like Trinity, just like Wonder Woman, is made out of clay and it's made out of her and Steve Trevor's DNA because she has hair strands. Let me tell you, if babies were made by me squeezing freaking threads in my hand, holy smokes, there'd be like a fucking population boom. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> This is how, this is why you tuned in 150 episodes ago. I run out of dirt <laughs> before I run out of strands. <laughs> This is what you tune into this show for comments like that. And the smart thing was Chris was responsible here today. And he was like, let's not get too drunk before we actually record this one. Cause half the time when we record these in person, we're like three quarters in the bag. I feel like when we were full oh, of but this comic was bad. It, it deserves bad comments. No, I, I, I love that comment. I'm just making, I'm just joking over here, but it was not great. Yeah. It's not as fine as sour. I'll, I'll definitely say that. What would you give this? 3.25. I can't, I can't even believe this. This is one of my favorite comics. 
Yeah, I was even gonna go maybe three on this one just because I really didn't like. I, 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 yeah, like halfway through it, I was just like, I'm over it. <laughs> like where the story is going, I'm thinking about even dropping this whole thing. You know, like no, I, I still think there's gonna be quality there somewhere along the way. So I, I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna drop it yet, but I'm with you. And if the sovereign guy was so powerful, where was hell? Where was he during absolute power? Right. You think he'd be like uh, freaking pulling some tr- some strings or you know pushing I, M- Amanda Waller around? I just don't like the story decompression. Like, please, like yeah. 14 issues into a series, we shouldn't be on the same plot like thread that you like. Okay, here's the comparison. We just said Batman Superman World's Finest. Everyone's showing up in that. There's like 20 people showing up. There's GSA and there, there's, there's Batman and Superman and like Eclipse. And that's one issue. Yeah. Like more has happened in that one issue that we just read in that book that I feel like has happened in this whole run so far. Just two different approaches. Yeah, for sure. Right? Like I think both have been well done at times. And, and not to say you just need everything on the page and everybody to show up for to make a good story. But this is too much now. 14 issues in. We had some good yeah. tie-in issues. I'll have to say no. No, thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's enough. <laughs> Isn't that her tagline in, the, yeah, in this whole That's thing? right. That's right. All right. Next up, we got Uncanny X-Men number four. I got the uh, the Doom variant this week for this one. What do you think of this, Chris? I know. This comic is growing on me. Absolutely. Yep. Same. <laughs> Like, I don't know what the heck they did with that issue number one. That issue number one was garbage. And this stuff here, I think, I don't know, they, this art is growing on me. I thought this art looked great. Yeah. You know, and I, I think this, uh, whoever this girlfriend of, uh, of yeah, Professor X hot. is, she turns into <laughs> that that Sarah character at the end. I just realized. Oh, well, her name is Sarah. Oh, I didn't freaking realize beast name that. Is Sarah. I didn't realize and, that. You know, they talk about some baby and all this, this whatever that Sarah whatever uh, you're right aren't you has got i never made that of, connection uh, yeah has got some you know some baby fever going on and, I don't know. and, and they kind of were talking about her trauma at the end of this issue yeah. about how because they kind of were doing it with like the flashback of the other mutants that they've recently had on their team yeah you're right i think you're right actually that's a good i never realized i i i agree with you this is comic is growing on me as well I actually think this might be one of the best X-Men books coming out currently now after this issue. I was like, yeah. this is really good, this this issue. Yeah, I, I love yeah, it. Yeah, like, uh, I think there's some variant covers coming up for the December solicitations that I, I picked up, but I might just be picking this up Yeah, regularly. You know, I'm, I'm almost liking this more than the, the X-Men book. Than the X-Men yes. book. Yeah, I, I actually agree with you. Um, yeah, I think it, it, it definitely grew on me for sure. Each issue has uh, offered more, I think, to the storyline, and it seems like it still has more to go. Yeah. And uh, and it's interesting, and I like the cast of characters, and the art is good. Yeah, I, I'm in absolutely. I, that's that's I, I I agree with you. Yeah, it's it's good stuff. Uh, it's good stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, I give this, you know, I, I give it a three point seven five stars as for books, but uh, compared to the other issues, this is. <sighs> I know, maybe even four. Yeah, I, I give this, this a four. This I give this a four out of five this week. Yeah, I'm liking it because we're four issues in. I'm invested now. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm, I'm even liking these uh, dumb kids too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a yeah. great way to end the issue too. Wolverine just got slashed up by that <laughs> woman, and Rogue is definitely having some issues fighting her. And as he warned her, they take him back there. And like he's supposed to be healing, and he just comes out. He's like blind. He's got like the <laughs> rag around. He's like, just point me to where this woman is, so I can, yeah. <laughs> I can fight her. Whatever he says, awesome, good that stuff. Is, that is some good Wolverine. Four out of five. It ha- it was it has been some good Wolverine. All right, speaking of Wolverine, Wolverine number two. Yeah, and some bad Wolverine. <laughs> it's not as good as that Wolverine. I'll say that much. Well, what do you think? Oh, come on. You know, you're going to tease a freaking Wolverine Wendigo. Yeah. You know, you want to harp back to his uh, his original appearance. And then freaking you have this, you know, have some some cheesy ass Wendigo that's looking for help. This <laughs> Wendigo is supposed to be a monster. He's like and, a kid that eats some bad meat. Right? Yeah. Or eats yeah fuck, I, eat, meat. I eat bad meat. I go to the washroom. Well, it's a human. <laughs> it's human. He eat, he eat human meat. Right? Yeah, mine could have been too. I don't know. But I ate some freaking, what was that? Some Caesar's. Some what's that Caesar dressing that was like two years old? Oh jeez! <laughs> well, I didn't turn into no Wendigo. <laughs> you just had the shits. <laughs> yeah, and it freaking hit me pretty hard and pretty quick. Let me tell you, it'd be a more interesting issue than this. Oh. Like I don't like how they throw in these uh, Weapon X henchmen here. I'm as you know, just some fodder for it uh, to get beaten up. You know, I imagine if if this Department H or yeah, yeah, sorry, Department H. Yeah. 
you know, I like I don't like how they kind of just, you know, now all of a sudden the, this department H is something. It's, you know, they haven't been anything for the longest time. And now they have like, you know, they have resources to send people out there to hunt mutants. I don't think so. And even just all the stuff that happened in the the other ones where they, you know, they killed a group of whatever, a group of campers, they killed a squad of mounties, you know, that's some unnecessary death. And uh, you know, like the first issues, you know, sort of ended on a decent story, you know, whatever that that adamantium uh gold adamantium something that was sucking up the the juice and looking for more adamantium and it just kind of dropped that storyline i'm gonna go with uh two two issues of the one to go i don't know i didn't like this issue all too much it was boring to your point very much didn't like it yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just not like in the Wendigo. direction. Oh. Yeah, I, I just did not expect that from this title. So, yeah, with Ultimate Wolverine coming out, boom, I can drop. Yeah, this very excited easily. for that. Excited for that. So this isn't bringing it. So I think I have this pre-ordered for the next couple of issues, unfortunately. But we'll see. Yeah, if it maybe it'll grow on me too. But I doubt it. I don't know. I'm not really liking the direction of this. Yeah. I really don't have too much to add to this. Uh, I, I don't comments. have too much faith in this writer either. Yeah. You know, he freaking blew up Daredevil. That's right. That's right. So, yeah, that's all I got to say on that. Unfortunately, just not what I was looking forward to from this title. Not what I was expecting and uh, a little disappointed so far in this one. Very underwhelming. So that's all I got to say on that. What'd you give this? Uh, three. Yeah. Same. All right. Next up, you got Spider-Man Reign 2, Oof. number four this week. And uh, this has been a series we've been enjoying so far. What'd you think of this one, Chris? Oh, another banger. I fucking love this uh this world that Spider-Man's in, whatever stories they put him into, you know, the the lore that that's all sort of intertwined here. You know, I was a little worried that Spider-Man was gonna be turned into some sort of villain here. You know, I think he has some good resolution with Mary Jane. And then you find out that uh whatever that that kitty cat or something was has something to, it's is that Miles Morales's yeah. daughter? Yeah. And with Gwen Stacy, right? Yeah. And then Felicia Hardy, you know, yes. picks her up at the end. Oof. This this is a pretty good world. If they could turn this into, you know, like another ultimate two or three world or something, I wouldn't mind uh, reading more of this world. That's some crazy stuff. You know, if uh, they want to give this Carrie Andrews, uh, you know, a little, little pocket dimension, uh, almost like the Batman Beyond, that would be... Yeah. That would be not unhappy that's a really good idea uh yeah that's a really good idea actually yeah, i'd be i'd be down for that i'd be in for that unfortunately this issue though is probably my least favorite issue of the series for so far this one really didn't do it too much for me honestly if i'm being honest i i don't want to say i was lost i mean this whole issue has kind of been like this whole series yeah. has been kind of like that you kind of get, you know, you just got to jump in and kind of like take it for what it is. And like you said, you're getting the information kind of thrown at you throughout each issue. Like we learned all those developments about the relationship between Miles and Gwen and everybody else in this issue. Um, and it seems like it's going to be coming to some sort of a conclusion next issue. I don't know what's going to happen really. Um, but I've really liked the Carrie Andrews art throughout this whole series has been oh. fantastic. And just the energy and the way that the, the story moves is unique on its own. I, 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 you know, I would say like in yeah. comparison to other comics. Um, but because of those same reasons, this one just didn't gel with me for, for whatever reason as, uh, as much as the other uh, issues had, but overall, I still really enjoy this series. And I, I don't think this was a bad issue. I'm not going to give it a horrible rating, but um, yeah, not as not as great as the other ones for me so far. What'd yeah. you give this? I still love this issue. Oh, they, look at the big scene there. Come on. How yeah. can you not? Great like scene. That? Great scene. Oh, geez. Yeah. 4.5 after seeing that. Wow. Yeah. I love this issue. 3.75 for me. And that's a that's a downgrade because I think I was giving this four four point two two five the other issues so far. So that's that sounds like a high rating for my for what I said. Yeah, yeah no, that's it's still good. Uh, and then finally, we got Ultimate Spider-Man number 10 this week. Got to end off with some Spider-Man, as always, with the double banger Spider-Man this week between Rain and Ultimate. Some of our favorite Spider-Man comics coming out. What do you think yeah. of this? I want to hate this one, but I don't. Yeah. You know, I'm glad they didn't uh, waste Marco Cicchetto on this uh, 
on this issue. Every time they do a talking head issue, <clears> like <throat> the other one when they went to dinner, they bring in this artist, yeah. it seems like, which Perfect. I'm perfectly fine with. Yeah, David Messina is the artist on this one. Uh, pure talking head issue. Every every page, nine panel grid, talking head issue. Yeah. Because yeah. I was thinking, uh, if this was him, like, he's got to be thinking to himself. Like, uh, he wasn't so. But if it was, like, what the heck? Well, that's why he smartly doesn't bring in Chichetto for yeah. this, because Chichetto wouldn't, I think, do a great job at this type of thing, and it's a waste of him. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. And he can be, you know, hopefully he's doing something is what you want with yeah. Chichetto. Like, he's more hopefully he's up to issues. some big splash pages. Yeah, but even here, you know, I want to hate this, but I do like this story that's freaking they're working yeah. on here, and they still put some twists on. You know, I guess you have whatever uh, Ben and uh, J. Jonah Jameson. You know, they're they're they got some big story going on, and they kind of hide everything up and you know they go to talk to liz allen and they talk to mj you know and all these people are now sort of all interconnected and you figure when they go up finally to harry osborne you know they even tempt uh they even tease like a freaking screw job from him that he's gonna freaking go on him yes but boom they freaking they they turn that around again at least that's yeah. what i thought they did yeah yeah and i think i i like the approach that they took in this because Obviously, those two don't know about the relationship that's brewing between the Osbournes and Peter. They all know that they're superheroes. Yeah. They do not know that they're superheroes, yet they're all in business together. So if you think about it, it's actually a really interesting kind yeah, of complicated like, kind of situation between all these people. It's a very tangled web. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And they're all kind of they're kind of all working with each other in one way or another. So it wasn't at first you 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 thought when they were going to bust this story is that they were not on the side of them yeah but then it was more so they just didn't understand the situation so much and really who they were after was the kingpin so it, it's kind of interesting how they approach that in this yeah. right and like you said there is still some bad doings some bad business practices some stuff he's hiding the osborne situation yeah. but at the end of the day He's a small kind of like yeah, like right here. Yeah, I think he's gonna freaking go full goblin on. Right, him and go, you guys are out. But right, you know, he turns right, and goes, yeah, this guy killed my dad too. He killed right. your wife. Or right, your you want family? the dirt? Yeah. I'll give you the dirt on this guy. Just yeah. keep us out of it, kind of thing. Right. So I I liked that, and I love the relationship of both these two newsmen. Like you know, people, the guys like actually. You know, that whole scene of them going to dinner and pressuring yeah. the, the dude that works for the Kingpin, like applying the pressure and being like, you got to go after the assistant. Like, I, I, I like I like that because, like, that is not something that you see anymore because the way of the newspapers have, has gone, yeah. you know, at this point. So, like, the, the fact that these are guys like hard hitting reporter type of situation with these two. The unlikeliest of people that would be together in a Spider Man book is Uncle Ben and J. Yeah. Jonah Jameson. It's just great. Honestly, you're right. I, I agree with you in the, with the way you started this, where you're like, I wanted to hate this because there's a lot of talking and a lot of nonsense in this one and not a lot of action. But like overall, it's good. It's so. good stuff. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, yeah. This is all writing on Hickman. You know, I don't know how he wrote this God baloney, but this stuff is great. <laughs> It's like that was the Hickman. That's more in the vein of the Hickman of old. I feel like that book. Oh, I know it's still the same person. No, but like, like two years ago. <laughs> but the things he's been writing lately, it's yeah. like I can't recognize this Hickman from that book. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like it seems I meant in in the style of writing and the approach because like we we like look at all the other books we've been getting lately. The Aliens Avengers one. Oh yeah. Right. The Wolverine Revenge one. Okay, not bad, but also again, again, just a different type of uh, yeah. approach that he's taken in writing that book. It's it seems like he's taken on some jobs I wouldn't have expected Hickman to do, right? Yeah. So it's kind of interesting lately. But this is still his best thing he's been working on. Yeah, for uh, sure. Uh, what'd you give this? Yeah, we have four point two five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed Chichetto, but I mean, you brought in the right artist for this issue. I yeah. will say that. Uh, okay, so that's going to do it for what we wanted to talk about that we read this week. Uh, what do you want to get to first? Do you want to get to some news or solicitations? Well, we're going to talk about some news, see what's going okay. on in the world. So New York Comic Con was this week. There was some news that came out uh, of New York Comic Con that was worth talking about. Uh, one of them being uh, the new event that's going to be happening in the Marvel Universe coming mm -hmm. uh, in 2025, Chris. It's a Doom event. It's yep. called uh, Emperor Doom, which is going to be written, written by Ryan North and R.B. Silva on art, who's a great artist. Yep. And I, I'll just read the press release here. 
Uh, upcoming One World Under Doom event begins February 2025 with Ryan North and RB Silva's Rise of Emperor Doom event series. An overreaching, uh, sorry, overarching status quo, the likes of which haven't been seen since 2008 Dark Reign. One World Under Doom spins out of Blood Hunt, where Doctor Doom manipulated Doctor Strange into passing him the mantle of Sorcerer Supreme. One World Under Doom sees Doom accomplish his ultimate goal at last as he uses his new power to take over the entire world. While Doom's reign will be felt across the Marvel Universe, the rise of Emperor Doom will go on, go behind the mask to bear witness to the triumphs and trials of Doom's rule, as well as all the foolish attempts to topple it. So there you go. That's what do you think of this news? I think it's great. The only thing I wanted to say is they should not call this Rise of Emperor. It should be just One World Under Doom. I think that's the greatest title ever. And this Rise of the Emperor, like, get rid of that. What the heck? There actually was a story that they did back in the day that was called Emperor Doom. It was an original graphic yeah. novel. And uh, maybe that's what they're kind of like. Oh, yeah, that's not going to come out good. No. There. But basically, yeah, this is the the cover of a original graphic novel they did where basically I don't want to spoil it, even though it's an older story. But the whole world becomes under the influence of doom because he does something essentially to make it so where people are like no. they fall into him like they're like, yeah, they're listening to his whims and like what, what he wishes like upon them and everything else. Like there's a, there's a strange influence that he starts to have over everybody. Whatever. I'll just spoil it. It's the purple man, the purple man. Yeah. It, it, from daredevil. Like, you know how he can say things and people yeah. do them. Basically he, 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 he captures the purple man and he uses him to basically make it. So, uh, everybody is under his spell yeah. essentially. I, okay. Anyways, that, that was that story from back in the day. I don't think it has anything to do with this. Uh, but Ryan North from Fantastic Four, he's been writing good stories, right? So, RB Silva, good artist. I love Doom. Obviously, yep. they did this because of the announcement of Robert Downey Jr. coming back as Doom in the Marvel Universe and him being the new big bad villain that's gonna finally make his debut at some point. But, uh, I'm all here for it. I think this is a good, good, good stuff. Yeah, I right? got no complaints. I'm happy. To, uh, I'm happy as long as the story goes where it should, right. Yeah, no, I agree with you. So we'll see. We'll see. How, but uh, if it's going to be like a bunch of like one offs, things that are going to spin into the other books, it seems like because they were compared it to Dark Rain, you know, as always, I'll probably pick and choose kind of what I'm interested in yeah. checking out when it comes to that. The other big announcement that came from Marvel from NYCC, uh, Ultimate Wolverine, this new Ultimate Wolverine yep. series, which is uh, uh, going to be with artists that uh, just did uh, Moon Knight with Jed McKay, Alessandro Capuccio. Um, I, I did like his stuff on Moon Knight. I'm not sure how he's going to be in terms of like his style on a, although this is an ultimate Wolverine book, but basically ultimate Wolverine, he's working for, uh, the bad guys, essentially. Yeah, the, maker, this. Or, yeah. the maker, yeah. The yeah. council of whatever villains. I'm not enjoying his look here, but I'm look, I'm looking forward to the comic. And Chris Condon is the writer of that, who did that Texas Blood, an image book I really enjoyed, and a couple other things. And I think he's slowly been working with like more big two books lately. Um, you know, he's written some stuff I've enjoyed. Uh, that Texas Blood was a really good crime book that Image did. So, yeah, I don't know how that's going to translate well to a Wolverine book. But again, this is Ultimate Wolverine. This is a new status quo again. Him working for the Maker, and it's like I think it's almost like that Berserker Wolverine mode where they have control of him essentially. Like he's going out on these missions and stuff like that. I think they said in the description of the series, yeah. and it's like against you know, he, it's not like he's choosing to do this or or maybe maybe he yeah, is. it's almost like a Winter Soldier. Yes, 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 yes. It's like that type of situation. Yeah. So that that's interesting. So I, I I look forward to that. That's definitely another announcement that I'm on board for. Uh, and then and then there was uh, one we were just talking about today, Chris. Too, uh, they also announced new titles for the Absolute Universe through DC Comics. Um, one of them was Absolute Manhunter, I believe. I'm just gonna bring yeah, that I think up it's right now. Absolute Manhunter, <laughs> and uh, I think they got to pump the brakes on these Absolute. Let's let's uh, let the first few issues breathe of the. Of the like the first issues of these absolute like you know absolute Batman was okay but that's only the first issue we still got Superman Wonder Woman I don't know about Wonder Woman you know I hope it's good but I'm not uh, I don't have high hopes for that so the other ones they announced were Absolute Green Lantern by Al Ewing and Janoy Lindsay who I think this might be Al Ewing's first DC stuff uh, has he been doing stuff for DC I know he's mostly a Marvel person but I wasn't sure I've been, been doing... too impressed with anything he's done not. He did I, a lot of that Immortal Hulk. Right. Or no, the... He did Immortal, Immortal Hulk. Hulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I heard that was a great run, it but was. I, I didn't read any of that. 
I did. I've liked some of the things Al <clears throat> Ewing has done, but I haven't loved all the things that he's worked on. So um, that being said, uh, he did uh, say that this was going to be like a horror take on Green Lantern, which I don't know about that. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. And then he got flashed by Jeff Lemire, which we already knew. Like the he Flash already, looks good. Yes. I've seen some uh, preview pages of The Flash. Whoever that artist is, that could be a banger. And then the, finally, we have Absolute uh, Martian Manhunter, which I know seems like a surprise to some. Uh, Chris inc concluded, I think you weren't very uh, too happy to hear about this well, one. Well, I, I, I do like the Martian Manhunter character, but I, don't, you know, I have no idea what this world is yet. You know, all we've seen is the absolute batman and this world doesn't look like it's filled with this dark side energy that they've been talking about so i guess we'll see uh but this is written by D denise camp who i believe is the writer of the ultimates book that we read right now is yeah. he not i think, I think he so. is there's a couple of people here they're either they were either involved in uh, avengers twilight or they're part of the ultimates like i think dennis that, camp dennis yeah. camp writes the ultimates book right now he's writing some good stuff right so there are some good people and guess involved. Who, who's the artist is the artist is, is the Serge Zekana Kuna? artist oh okay I javier thought... rodriguez is the artist and he's the guy who's been doing the zatanna series bringing down the house which has grown on you you said it has grown on me that's the story not the art okay fair enough <laughs> so maybe you're not gonna be but for a martian manhunter book might fit well i don't know no nah, he's got to be like freaking uh He's got to be that Dan Moore type art. I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm a fan of Javier Rodriguez, so I'll be here for that one. But I don't know if I'm going to pick it up in issues or not yet. But just like the Ultimate books, we are seeing different takes on beloved characters here. Uh, if I, I don't, for some, I know yeah. not everybody's going to like likes Martian Manhunter or maybe Green Lantern, but I, I think it's important that they put other big like other characters into the limelight as well right like do they have to all be ongoing series do they all have to come out at once to your point Maybe well that's not, it i don't know right? if these are if these are only like you know whatever mini series or you know five issue runs fine but if these are you know if they're trying to you know run a whole world here with martian manhunter oof, come on <laughs> no i think what they're doing is probably putting a justice league together of sorts if i had to guess because there's probably going to be a because they even talked about them being it seemed like they were in team formation in that dc all-in book right yeah. you kind of saw all of them it seemed like so i don't know although you didn't see all of them you only saw the trinity trinity at that point so i i don't know well, i guess we'll see what happens when it comes nah, to that. just give these guys a few years to breathe come on was was there any other D, uh nycc news that uh you recall hmm. no just stuff on the floor though that those that floor there looks great i saw that uh there's a giant goku over there there's like comparing it to, I don't know. It doesn't even look they have any vendors there. It's all just, you know, it's like studios putting out the, you know, they have like a walking yeah. dead floor. It's or impressive. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Compared to our con, which yeah. you've now gone to, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> crazy. Like, I don't know. I might have to save up a few years uh, and try and make it into one of those. Things. Yeah. Cause it does look like a good, hell of a time. I, I definitely would join you for that if you ever want to talk yeah. to them about that. I'm down for that. Uh, so yeah, it does, it did seem impressive. So hopefully you guys were able to co experience that out there. Uh, but you know, as we hear all the news from the con floor, we were excited by some of these announcements. So we look forward to checking some of those books out, uh, in the new year there. So that's always good. Uh, all right, Chris, uh, that's going to do it for in the news. Oh, let's take a look at some new comic solicitations for nope. January, 2025 from DC comics. So the DC solicits are out now. Uh, nothing else as of yet, but we'll go over the DC stuff here today on the show just in time for our 150th episode chris we got some dc solicitations nice. for january let me just bring that up here well yeah this has been a fun time here today uh okay let's see here what we got shout out to comicreleases.com no affiliation but we use the site here to look at books normally yeah this is one of the best places to look for the solicitations i agree know. yeah uh aquaman number one a new aquaman nope. series yeah no i'm out on this too john timms is a good artist he seems to be the artist on this book jeremy adams not familiar with his work but uh not not that interested in an aquaman book to be honest with you so there you go it takes it would take a lot for me to get interested in an aquaman book and then that team is not going to do it unfortunately then we got justice league the adam project number one nope no i'm out on this too it looks like is this like an adam mini series or something i'm I know they think they have the Adam and somebody else there. They're trying to restore powers back to the people that lost them. Green Lantern fractured spectrum number one. Interesting, but no. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting cover. 
uh, uh, following the events of the Civil Core, a new era in Green Lantern mythology begins. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm out on that one, too. Then we got DC Power Rise of the Power Company, number one. I don't even know what that is. No idea. I'm out. I don't even want to read the solicitation. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even get involved in it. All right. So that's the that's some new stuff that they just announced this one. Yeah, because now this uh, site kind of breaks it up into categories. These, yeah. were, these were the new number ones in featured stories this yeah. month. And I think we're all out on all of those. So no features. Uh, yes. Absolute Batman number four. Absolutely. Oof, that egg cover kicks. So that one's great. But if we're going to go with the variant, I got to tell you, this one is the way to go. I love this one. This is by uh, James Heron. Oh, no, it's a one in 25. Never mind. Then it looks like I'm just going to go with the Nick Trigata, which is which is fine. That's an amazing cover. I just was hoping. Well, funny thing about, the, I think, the number one absolute batman yeah if you bought variant covers like you know how they have to do the you could rip off the variant cover and you still have an absolute number one i didn't a notice cover. that i got a variant i didn't notice that and then like because i think the the a cover is doing the best is that right as is that, so people have been doing that that's what i've heard, <laughs> that's what I've heard. well there you go uh but yeah we're, we're in on this that's good uh for now absolute superman yes i'm still in on this it's looking good it is it is. And uh, that's number three. And as Chris previously mentioned, we're not sure about Wonder Woman, but for now, I'm, yeah, in I'm on still this. in until I read one. Absolute Wonder Woman number four. Yes, I'm in. Not sure about the artist on this book, though. He didn't. What's well, with swords now? I heard in the Iron Man number one, he's going to have a sword. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> Iron Man. Iron Man. Yeah. Well, I didn't hear about that. I heard somebody. I, there's another DC character I heard that's going to have a sword now. I, I can't remember which one, but I, I heard supposedly this Wonder Woman. Her sword's like it's a magic sword. It just comes out of her pocket. Oh yeah, and then Absolute Batman had the axe yeah. on his chest. Yeah, I don't know. People like swords. What can they say? But it's well, magic. It's the same sword as magic. It's like that giant freak. Oh, I love that sword. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> everybody has one. Now, it seems. Uh, then he got Justice League Unlimited number three. Yes. This is on the fence, but yes. Probably. On the fence? The first issue hasn't even come out. I'm on the fence. There, I, I feel a hustle in there. No, there's, hustled. there's no hustle. Yeah, this is getting, the, the same. We're getting hustled on it. It's not Justice League. Once you throw these unlimited or you no, it, throwing something else in there. No, this is the same team yeah. that brought us the Batman Superman World's Finest stuff. No, that's been I, great. I smell a hustle. No, yeah. I'm all in. <laughs> I'm buying it, but I'm smiling. <laughs> I, I would get that cover. That's another 125, though. I think this one, yeah, no, that's no, a, no, this one, three, yeah, yeah, it's a nice one, but yeah, I think it is. Uh, Superman 22. Yep, you can get that doomsday cover. Wait, think. is Dan Moore drawing both these books? This guy's crazy. This guy's doing Justice League Unlimited and he's doing Superman. It's a hustle in there. I mean, he, we've seen him do like three books at once, I feel yeah, like, but like, like that's insane. They're not stick. Figures. Well, they will. You know, this guy's only a man. I don't know. Is he? <laughs> I don't know. This guy's like, uh, maybe he's an AI that we're not aware of. <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, you're getting this? Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting that. Uh, I think the Doom. I'll read cover. it. I'll read it. Yeah. Oh, this one here. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, Superman Lex Luthor special. Nope. Also written by Williamson. I'm out on the specials. That might be good, though. I don't know. I like like him. Supposed to get his memory back here, or that's the, the idea there. All right, here's the question, Chris. Wonder Woman 17. Yeah, I'm still I'm here till 20. That's a great cover. Yeah. That's also a good cover. I might do that if that's a variant with the other cover. I think there's a sweater weather cover. It's not but, listed but it's not here. Listed. Yeah, okay. I've seen a few sweater weather covers, but they're not. Oh, great. actually, it does say sweater weather variant yeah. by Frank Cho. I would get that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I buy a Frank Cho cover. A sweater Absolutely. weather variant by Frank Cho. I buy That's that not him. Him. So, That's yeah, not him. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm in on that. I'm in on that. Uh, New Gods, too. No. no. I might be reading this, though, digitally. I'll check out the first issue. I don't know. Challengers of the Unknown. I'm not picking up the issues, but I'm definitely going to be reading that. I'm actually very interested in this book. Christopher Cantwell, this is going to be basically like, this is like the DC's Fantastic Four type book. No. I'm definitely in on that. At least reading it. The question all along the Watchtower. No, I don't think so. I like Renee Montoya question, but I don't know about that. A uh, Action Comics 1082. No. No. Titans 19. No. What did I? I think I might have even read Titans this year. This Black week. Canary, best of the best. Yeah. The best around. <laughs> I just remember a karate movie, the best of the best, and it was a freaking pretty good karate movie. Which cover? 
I'm just going to cover a that's uh that's that cover. Ryan Sook. Yeah, that yeah. uh that soury or whatever, that's a little too anime for me. Yeah, fair. I, I yeah, I'll probably go with the first one too. Black Lightning three. Nope. JSA three. Yes. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I think Lemire is going to be a good fit for this. Oh, that's the cover. If that's not a one in 25, I'll definitely nice get that. Cover. Oh, that's Dustin New. And of course, so he's worked with many times. Yep. Getting that one. That's not a one. That's not a ratio variant. So yeah, I'll get that one. Green Lantern 19. No. Oh, Jeremy Adams is writing this one as well. So there you go. He's also writing that other one that's coming out. Green Arrow 20. Uh, no. Chris Condon. It looks. Yeah. So he's already working for DC. He's the guy who's going to be doing the. Uh, the uh, Martian Manhunter book, I think no. we just announced, right? Flash 17. No, wait, is he? Who, who, Chris Condon is doing uh, the ultimate Wolverine, I think. I think we just mentioned one of the new books we just talked about. I'm forgetting already. The <laughs> Flash 17. No, Green Arrow. No, Metamorpho. No, Shazam 19. No, Power Girl 17. You still nope. reading this? No, I'm still reading it. There's that some new character, Ejecta. That's supposed to be some big news, but uh, no. Okay. Covering well, that's, that second cover is all right, but I got a lot of cheese already on her. It's got to be extra cheesy if I'm buying her covers now. Fair. Batman Superman World's Finest. Yes. Looks like Gutierrez is staying on the book here, too. Yeah. I'm not buying this. That's one. a Frank Cho cover there, too. That's a good fucking cover right there. Somni, Chris Somni. Yeah, there you go. That's the one I'm getting. Oh, there you go. <laughs> burn his own pecker. <laughs> <laughs> That's your sweater weather variant yeah. for that one. <laughs> Batman office. Uh, we got 156. Zdarsky, Tony Daniels coming back. Yes. I feel bad. Yeah, yeah I'm buying it. I feel bad for Chip Zdarsky. We don't know. that Nothing officially has been announced yet. They didn't announce it at NYCC. I'm surprised. Maybe tomorrow, though. I don't know. We'll see. Or maybe we missed the announcement. We'll see. Batman 156, though. Yes. Yeah. Detective 1093. Yes. And I'm loving, loving these variant covers by Dan Panosian. Great covers that he's busting out. Are you in on this? I'm not in. Oh, I'm in. Batgirl number three. You read this freaking Nocturne there. You won't be in either. <laughs> no. No. I'll, I'll probably read it. But, same. Uh... Yeah, same. I like her. She's, she's a good nice character. Covers, but I don't know that she, she's a good character. I, I like her a lot. I don't like that full face mask. Catwoman now, uh, written by your girl Toron Grunbeck. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> Look at this Frank Cho cover, though. I know, but I, I don't know. I like those pencil ones. That's a those good pen covers. Those are good too. But this is also like you could see it's colored in. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm not digging this cover. I might get that just for and that. That's cover. the sweater weather cover. There, come on. It's only been a year. You miss it out. Ah, screw that. Harley yeah. Quinn, 47. Yes. No. Yeah, I get that one. That's DNA a nice one. cover yeah. with uh, DNA. Yeah. And that's her sweater weather cover. Come on. I thought this was supposed to be uh, fancy. <laughs> this one here? Yeah. It's not yeah. That great. She's well, fucking cheese in that cake, let me tell you. <laughs> Poison Ivy, 29. No. I was looking at This was on my list there until I saw which of the sweater, sweater <laughs> weather cover varied was. Boom, that's it. No, nah, it's not. Yeah, good. nothing. She's got a. Uh... Come on. <laughs> She's Pay five a... bucks for this shit. <laughs> Nightwing 122. No. Oh. Yeah, what am I supposed to say? Look at these guys. Oh. Weather, weather, weather. <laughs> oh, I can't do that with a girl. Listen, man. People like Nightwing. Why? Well, yeah, I like that cover too. If that was a girl, freaking played out that way. Birds of Prey 17. Yeah, no sweater weather there, but. Uh... Yes, yeah, but so there was last year, and I enjoyed it. That was a yeah. uh, cover by Villa Lobos. Yeah, that was that's a great right. one. Barda. I picked this up. That's a nice cover there, too, yeah. though. But uh, I, I'll that's a nice up, cover there. I'll pick too. up that cover. This one here, I like. Yeah, definitely pick that up. Two Face. Two Face is a series. Did we miss this last time? I don't remember that. They, I'm out on this. They but... should start Two Face on number two, personally, but <laughs> maybe that is what they're doing. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember that being a series, but no, I'm out on that. Batman yeah, Dark Patterns. Sure. I don't even know any of these series anymore. Oh, Dark on. I don't even know what that is. Batman and Robin 17. No. Batman yeah. and Robin Year One. Yes. No. Chris. Yes. Come on. Enough of these year ones. How many year ones does Batman have? Like, wasn't there like that Batman and Robin a while ago? There so was there that, was there was Batman there was that three issue. Remember they fighting the King Croc or the Crocodile yeah, that was guy? The Jeff Lemire one. Yeah, that was one. That one was great. I don't, don't, read I don't think that was year one. Oh, it wasn't year one, it but was it was Batman still and Robin. Batman and Robin when they started out in the beginning. So, yeah. So, Which there's, is what? so there's Batman year one. There's 
Robin year one. There's Batgirl year one. There's Batman year two. And now this is Batman and Robin year one, Chris. All right. There's many year ones. <laughs> I'm out. Uh, and I'm out on that stupid long last Halloween too. What? Yeah, I'm out. I'm not buying it. Jenny Sparks number six. Nice cover. I'm out. That's probably even good too. Batman full moon. No. I'm out yeah. on both of those. DC versus Vampires World War V number yes. six. Yes. Love the last issue. Oh, what's this now? Six of 12. Did they just raise it or was it always six of 12? I thought it was six. I thought it was six too. But uh, we bring it on. Yeah, there must have been uh, must be a popular series still for them. Milestone Universe. No. DC Horror presents number four. No. Creature Commandos. No. no. DC's Lex and the City. Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to be uh, whatever her name is? Samantha. Yeah. The sex in the city. Oh man, what's going Jesus on here? Christ. Little Batman month one, number three. No. Oh, and these facsimiles are facsimiles. Yeah, there's some good ones here. Fuck. All the hush got issues. Me going. All the hush issues. I so I read I read the whole hush series because I saw these ones. What'd you there. think of it? It's fucking awesome. Okay. I still don't understand like how uh what's I don't understand. Did you read Long Halloween? No. That's what you but, should... That's why when I when I was speaking earlier about Catwoman or whatever it was, oh, I was about after to say, you read Hush, oh, okay, you know, like, like because I, I yeah, maybe, but that's Jim Lee's Catwoman and that, and that, like, it well, looks great. For many reasons I read this Hush because maybe I wanted to buy these two, whatever. And the fact that they're coming back, I imagine now. they come out with the whole yeah, series. I yeah. want to see if it was, it was like a good story to read, which it is. The art inside is great. Yeah, it's great. And then now this hypes me up for that uh, the new announcement that well not. The new rumor that they're coming that back. That it's going to be Jim Lee and yeah. uh, it's the same writer. Yeah. I Jeff heard a lot Loeb. of bad things about this writer, but Jeff Loeb, who also, yeah. But he's, he, whatever. He, he also did Long Halloween. Yeah. So, it's like, you know, he doesn't have to do a great story. He's done but, some pretty baloney stories. I mean, even, but even as long as, you know, but if you're writing with, some people with would Jim argue Lee, Hush is pretty baloney. But yeah. The, the but art, if you're writing with Jim Lee, it, no, if you have freaking that, that is the keys to the kingdom. I know. And Jeff Lee's going to be, hey, you know, you're putting freaking 18 characters in here, not, uh, yeah. you know, I don't want to see freaking, you know, Baloney Frank from the... You're not going to hear me, are you? Because, like, Hush is my favorite period of Jim Lee art. It may not be my favorite story, but Jim no. Lee art on that is fantastic. It's my favorite period. Even, like I told you, even for me, it's even better than the X-Men stuff. I love his yep. Hush stuff. Like, it's a great well, period of Jim Lee art. Yeah, every, every great character in there. Yeah. Good yeah. stuff. Uh, all right. I'm not buying those facsimiles, though. It wasn't that good. All right. Well, that's going to do it for the new comic solicitations for DC for January 2025 in the new year. Hey, Chris, what are you looking forward to reading next Oof. week? Oh, I thought we were going to go for our number one comic. I got to load this shut up. <laughs> that's next. That's our final thing. Come on now. 150 episodes. You don't know that. <laughs> oh, man. This has been good, though. Let's see. Where is this thing here? Okay, let's we'll start with Marvel next week. X Men Six. I'm probably gonna read Avengers nineteen, but I'm gonna start picking that up. This Hulk eighteen is supposed to be like a like an eight hundred legacy issue. Oh yeah. So I'll definitely try and read it. Maybe I should have bought it. <laughs> Iron Man number one, buying that. X Factor three, read that. This Spider Boy baloney. I don't know. You've ordered that? I know. I'm not. I'm, I'm not buying it. Not reading it. But these. This dance lot is dropping in characters and they're like crazy. There's a spider girl, there's a oh, whole really? showing up. <laughs> this can't be in the real world. Uh, let's see, Dazzler 2. No, uh, that might be it. Oh, yeah, it might be a small week for Marvel. Let's see what's going on with DC next week. What we got Nightwing 119 is coming out next week again. I'm not buying it, not reading it. Superman 19, Absolute Wonder Woman. I'll see what's going on with Fly, or Harley Quinn. Sorry, Zantana bringing down the house, reading it. Uh, I bought the first few issues, but I dropped off. Let's see what's going on with Power Girl. That might be it for that, too. And for Image. Oh, Void Rivals, reading that. And uh, looks like that might be it. 
Yeah, pretty pretty good week for me. I got Absolute Wonder Woman number one, Creep Show Volume Three number two, Detective Comics with Tom Taylor starts next week, ten ninety, Gromits number five. That's been a really great series. Harley Quinn forty four. Uh, my one of my favorite new series that came out now, Moon is following us number two, which is uh, the Daniel Warren Johnson uh, series uh, with Riley Rossmore and art. That was a really great first issue. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number three, Jason Aaron continuing his run. Universal Monsters Frankenstein number three, Michael Walsh doing a great job there. Void Rivals 13, X Factor 3, X Men 6. And like Chris mentioned, there's a Tana bringing down the house. That's the last issue of that miniseries. Number five comes out next week. So, yeah, good week. Solid week, actually. I really like all those books. So that's, uh, well, except for Harley, I guess. But <laughs> everything else is good. Hey, speak of uh, Daniel Warren Johnson, I started reading some of the Wonder Woman Dead Earth. Oof, good stuff, too, there. Absolutely. Only read the first two books, but that's crazy business. Yeah. Did you get to the part where he she rips out somebody's spine and beats them to death oh, with it? Spoiler alert, I don't think so. <laughs> and that happens at one point. She rips out someone's spine and then uses the spine. Well, you as find a out, at least in the beginning, though, you find all those demons that she's been for, whatever those. Yeah, Hedra. wait for it. Wait for it. That's all Part I got. One of those say. Hedras that she's been fighting are actual like the Amazons. It might be happening in the third issue if you only read the first two. Yeah. She literally rips out someone's spine, like their whole spinal cord, and then uses it as a weapon. <laughs> See that before in Deadpool and Wolverine. That's true. <laughs> that's true. It's been done now. I guess they copied DWJ there for that I one. Guess. All right. Well, that's going to do it for what we're looking forward to checking out uh, next week, guys. And finally, our favorite book of the week. Chris, yeah. for I, the 150th I few, time. I had a few in the running, but just looking at it once I talked about it, it's got to be Spider-Man Reign 2. I am loving that wow. series. Wow. Wow. Well, unfortunately, that didn't do it for me this week, but I do still really enjoy it. Uh, some books even kind of maybe, uh, honestly, like, I thought better of them after talking about them with you today as that as a, it always happens. Some rides to the top as a result of our conversations. Could be local man 225 though. Oof. If anything, that, that, well, that would, des that wouldn't well, deserves the so, comic. So are you going to go over. with that? No, but Spider-Man ran okay. to just too awesome. Okay. But you had to uh, honorable mention, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know what? Um, honestly, I, I think at the end of the day, I mean, if I was going by the what you were saying, I probably would have went with Nightwing just because I'm like, this deserves recognition. I got to go with Batman Superman World's Finest. I was just super impressed by this book this week. With and The artist definitely was a big part of that because I was not expecting this really great artist on this title, even though I feel like they drew the last issue. Just didn't make as much of a lasting impression on me. Uh, this was great. And it was just a really good uh, issue with, with everybody involved in this one. And uh, I mean, I, you know, I could have also made an argument maybe for Batman and Robin this week, but I feel like despite this one, it just had so much more going on in it. And Batman and Robin was just, like I said, a regular run of the mill Batman yeah. comic, despite it being well done, both comics done by Mark Wade written by him at least. Right. So yeah, I think that's the only one I can really make an argument for here this week that uh, was in my running for favorite of the week. So yeah, I'm going to give it up to that. I don't think there was uh Oh, my honorable mention is Where Monsters Lie, because that's just a fun book. Yeah, I love that book. But I, I, I'll give it another issue. That might be the next my next favorite one, but we'll, we'll see. I feel that the world's finest stuff wasn't supposed to be canon, but I think it's being forced to be canon because it's so good. You know, it's like that Marvel <laughs> Comics Presents, you know, but like the only, the only story I can go back is that Weapon X, where it wasn't really a canon right. story, but... The story just took off. It's kind of straddling that line where it's, it's like, like if it, it gets too popular. It's like it has to become canon because it's just so good. Every once in a while, you'll see that now he, like you said, he's forced to bring up something that's happening in the current continuity. But most yeah. of the time, he's not really referencing anything. Yeah, so because it's like, like when this started, you know, there'd be a right. story of Batman and Superman. Felt like throwback type yeah, stories. back in the time. But yeah, yeah, now, yeah. like you know, you're gonna see this. Who's that stupid kid? I, Boy oh, Thunder. Right, right, right. Boy right. Thunder is going to be like the freaking the, the main, you know, whatever, the linchpin in the next event somehow. I forgot what it was, but I feel like they mentioned something. It may have been absolute power. They they mentioned something. Oh, no, they had it. the that Batman, Superman, Green Lantern, Amalgam. Right. He showed up somewhere in, in a story recently. Yes. I think that was that. Did he start with show up in absolute power? Because that would make sense. Mark Wade also wrote that. Yeah. So maybe that's where he like it wasn't up. him, but there was another one. Or yes. Something. Yes. 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 I forgot what that was. There was some sort of uh, um, 
correlation between this and something else, yeah. though. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, a big yeah. thing that happened when, when yes. you know, the Batman, Superman, and composite Lantern, Superman, you know, or uh, uh, composite uh, Batman, Superman, whatever. Yeah, the fusion called. power. Yeah, going yeah, on. yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that. You're right. There was, but normally though, you can never really tell whether or not it's just throwback stories or current continuity, which I think has always worked well for the book. Yeah. But you're right. If they do too much of that and they got to involve current continuity, it's going to drive the book down as far as I'm concerned. That's what's good about yeah. this book, honestly. But I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this week I thought it was the winner for sure. My favorite thing of the week. But yeah, Spider Man Rain's still doing it for you though. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. It was a great issue. I think. I think you may have picked every single issue as your favorite of the week. I, I'm pretty certain. I could be. It. I think I, so. I almost don't want to call it that, but at least three or the four you definitely have. I'm pretty certain. Yeah, I don't think maybe the last issue. I didn't like the last issue so much. See, but that was this issue for me. Like yeah. that was that was the this was the issue where I'm like, yeah, it was okay. No, they're they're t- twisting Peter into be some sort of villain, and this one they they freaking stepped way back from that. Right. You know, he lost his beard. He's looking more like Spider Man now. Right. Uh, can't wait for the next issue. So yeah, there you go. And that'll be the last issue, actually, to wrap up the miniseries. So I'm excited. Spider-Man to Marine 3 like. coming 2026. <laughs> heard it here first. Chris is calling it right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to do it, everyone. Thank you again to Chris. Chris, you still got some beer left there. Cheers one more time to 150 episodes. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I did the stone cold. And shout out uh, to Chris once again. Thank you for coming down and joining me, Chris. This is always a good time and indulging you for our comic conversations. No, no worries. It's been a fun time doing this show. And uh, yeah, looking forward to another year of doing this, hopefully. And make sure to tune in, guys. As we mentioned, at the end of the year, we always do our year-end reviews, where we our, our comic shop talk awards, where we're going to highlight some of the things that we talked about this past year. Yeah, I kind of ran some numbers, you know, with 150 episodes, so... I must have been at least 330, 40 beers. I must have had maybe $10,000 or <laughs> oh, fuck the money. That's, I'd say that's easy 50 bucks a week, I think. So, but yeah. Especially now. Like, it might have been a little lower in the beginning. Like, I think the comics were cheaper. I was still getting them at the American prices. Now I'm paying like some sort of freaking Canadian tax. No, I'm way off. 10,000 is way over that. That's not, it's still a couple grand. <laughs> yeah. Easy, easy a few grand a year. Yeah. And uh, what's that? Maybe 400 cigarettes. Uh, one coffee. I think we had one coffee last week. I like you running these stats. Usually I'm the one that comes with the stats on those I'm shows. I'm trying yeah. to throw some numbers out here. Uh, <laughs> but anyways. Oh, this has been a fun one. No, it's been a good one. Yeah. So but it's a good time. I enjoy doing this. And I'm, uh, I'm you know, thanks for letting me oh, do this Oh, of course. You. No, it's been, it's been a good way to keep in contact and talk every week about something we both enjoy. And ever since you got back into comics, yeah. I almost felt like I was taking advantage of you. I'm like, hey, man, you want to talk some comics? I'm like, I, I, I don't got but many other Let me tell you, I was comics. looking at some back issues. Now I have my comics freaking piled all over the place at my, uh, at my place. Right. There's a lot of comics I shouldn't have bought. Like I'm just looking at that when the Justice League died. Like what a freaking waste of that is. I was reading the like you know I had like a stack of it might have been some Poison Ivy in there. I think some of the Justice League right. leading up to that. It's like oh like fuck yeah, dude, that's five dollars. It's it's like when I look at lottery tickets that I forget yeah, to throw away. Right. Boom. There's five. There's five. I got a stack of five dollar bills that I'm gonna throw in the garbage. Right. As I told you when you first got back into it, because I know how it is when you first get into it, you want to buy everything. Yeah. Every look, everything looks interesting to you. Everything. Oh, what's this all about? What's this? What you think everything is going to freaking pop? But... Then you get burned a numerous amounts of times, and you're like, "Yeah, no." And then you start to like look at everything like a little bit better, yeah. and be like, "Yeah, should I really get that? Do I need this?" And then, I know how it is. Yeah, and even still, I still get burned occasionally. Yeah. As much well, as even I'm... like trying to buy comics that pop. For Ultimate Spider-Man number one, I, you know, oh, I go, oh, fuck. You know, there was no hype to the series. Right. And, you know, okay, I'll get this. Uh, you got a J, J. Scott Lee Campbell. You got the Ryan Stegman can, or a cover. Right. I'm not buying the, the fucking A cover. Nobody wants the A cover. A cover is the number yes. one cover yes. to, uh, that goes through the roof. Yes. So who Crazy. knows any of this stuff? That's yeah. what I mean. Like, we all, like, act like all you, even you speculators out there. But to your point, they, they always think it's funny because the A covers on a lot of these are the ones that are the most valuable, which is weird because like they're well, not I think even not an absolute Batman. I think it's the A cover. That's uh, that's I didn't that's get the selling. A cover. I got the West Craig one. Well, but there. you can rip it off and you still have it. <laughs> well, there you go. There you have it. There you come, come to us for your speculating tips. <laughs> that's it. I don't know. 
I don't promote that. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, you want, you want your comics to do good too. Of course. At the end of the day, we all yeah, do. Right. We all do, right? So, but uh, you know, that's that's why I get covers like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this fan expo exclusive. There's like thousands of the <laughs> wow, but still it's thousands over over a continent. That's right. That's People right. People want that, you know. That's right. I just, wanted, cake. I just wanted to show off that cake. Yeah, the art germ cover there of Rogue. <laughs> All right, now we're just babbling. But thank you once again, 150 episodes in. This is a lot of fun. And I uh, look forward to seeing us back here again next week. Uh, but farther apart, Chris will not be here next week. <laughs> but it's always uh, good when Chris drops in and uh, graces us with his presence here in That's the good. studio. It's a great time. So, All right, guys, thanks again. Make sure to like and subscribe. And thank you to Chris. And All right, All right thank later, you. Guys.